Uh, good, good afternoon. I'm Keith Wright. I'm with the City of Lynchburg's Community Development Department. Um, I serve as the facilitator for the Community Code Compliance Team, and we are here today on the 26th of July, uh, conducting a walkthrough in the Timbridge Hill neighborhood. Uh, we've been here several times over the years, but it's been a couple years since we've been here, so we're excited to be back. Um, we're going to do a walkthrough heading down towards um, uh, the Hollins Mill Road area and wrap around Federal Street. Um, we do have a, a couple partners here that I'd like to uh, present. Timbridge Hill has invited us to be here today, uh, along with the friends of Timbridge Hill. And we have Aubrey Barber, also known as Chubbs, or the mayor of the neighborhood. Um, <laughs> He goes by many more too, I'm sure. But uh, we do have him and he'd like to say a few words. Well, first of all, it's a pleasure for you guys to come out and check the neighborhood out because so many neighborhoods and all like that, they have people to come out and check and see what they need. And I'm so grateful for you all guys to come out and do everything in my power that I can to make sure that we have a good walkthrough. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Mary Jane Dolan, uh, City Council member, and I'm really delighted to be here and get a chance to walk through this neighborhood once again. So I'm looking forward to our trip and uh, hope to see lots of good things. Uh, my name is Sterling Wilder. I'm the City Council representative for Ward 2, so this is one of my areas. So I'm glad to be here and also glad for all the many citizens and friends that we have to come out to, to, to support Timber Chill and do what we can to continue to make um, the parts of our city the best that we can, how we can work together to do that. And I also want to remind all the citizens about the city forums going to be held um, on August the 7th, 6 o'clock at 5th Street Baptist. And then we talk about the closing of 5th Street, that I think is a phase three, I guess it is. And we talk about that at 5th Street Baptist on August the 7th at 6 o'clock. I think it's important for the neighbors to know that portion of 5th Street from, I think, Polk, whatever, is going to be closed. So as long as we make sure all the residents know about it and come out and hear about the closing, and will be for a couple, several months. So I want to make sure we all are aware of that. And also any other issues we have in our community that we can address while we're here so we can make our city a better place to live, work, and play. Thank you. All right, thank you guys, appreciate it. And uh, thanks for being here today. We look forward to a good walk. Uh, so let's, let's move on. Thank you. They were trying to, they went in the other night to cut the, um, the air on and noticed they thought maybe the fuse had blown. And they came back out and looked and somebody had clipped the lines and was ready hey, to. Is that still on the copper? Yeah. Mm -hmm. the yeah. They yeah. To get the attempted, to, but they didn't make it all the way. No, they didn't make it all the way, so they discovered. But I think they had taken everything loose, and the only thing they wanted to do was to uh, come back probably during the night. And see, a lot of times they think, you know, maybe some of the, uh, like, see the guy down there now? And see, they maybe think somebody down there working, nobody paying attention, so that's why that they, uh, you know, and disconnected, they probably will come back through the wee hours in the morning, you know, to um, be get it. issue with that obviously is a lack of uh, sight line really. It is. It, it presents a traffic um, problem for, for vehicles coming down the street. Um, there's certainly growth you know coming out into the street so we need to get that cut back. Um, we're we're, we're going to put a call into our public works crew to bring the bush hog over here. There's a couple more areas in the neighborhood that we're going to we're going to give them to um, that we noted also up on first street. So um, yeah they'll they'll bring the bush hog through here and clean the right of way for us. Is that especially difficult to keep up with during the summer months? It is. The crew is uh, very limited in resources, and uh, they're going to really hit it about, you know, at best two, maybe three times a year. So it is encouraged that the neighbors um, pull together within their neighborhood and uh, in safe areas to clear the right-of-way back where they can. But this is a little unique in that um, you're, you're really out in the, in the right-of-way clearing. So um, as far as uh, people working on it, we... Um, this would be kind of an unsafe area, if you will, and so that's why we're, we're going to call the public works crew to help us out. Beverly and I also have a, uh, I'm sorry, we got a tractor coming behind us. <laughs> you know, it's amazing how a big tractor is. <laughs> 
walk up on you. Isn't it? Something that's louder than me, actually. <laughs> yeah. But we do have some items here on the corner mm -hmm. um, that are uh, going to be called in for public works assistance too to help pick it up. It's some brush, brush and bulk items um, to be picked up, and so we'll There's have that scheduled drain. too. Drain the drain is also clogged up. Mm -hmm. You want to add that? I get it. The drop in. I'm putting it on here. We have a drop in that's kind of clogged mm -hmm. up. Yeah, this, this property is uh, one that we'll cite for, for having some trash. Um, there are some uh, other items along with the trash, but um, you can see on this box and um, on the, the barrel there that there's a lot of flies that are hanging around. And so um, obviously a sign that, that maybe it's been sitting there longer than a day or two. Um, so we'll get a letter to the property owner to, to, uh, to clean this property up. And, so essentially once it creates a public nuisance hazard that's when you cite them or, or at least send a letter yeah this is all this is all open trash um if it was if it was certainly you know bagged up with appropriate containers or or within a an appropriate container um we wouldn't cite it but um since since it is open trash uh, that's why we're citing this one calling dispatch to see about these pups and all of our animal control wardens are actually tied up at the minute. What would they do once they do arrive? They've already had several complaints about this particular property so they were coming out here today anyway. Um, they're worried about the health of the dogs and uh, they may take them and put them over at the shelter. Certainly they can't be running at large at the very least. Right, right. They would try to find the owner and talk to them. Hey, this is Stephen Wood. Oh, here comes somebody down. I think they wanted to call y'all and call Santa Claus. You go inside there, right there. You're coming to the hall. to come at you and do something. You call them, you call them, and they said not unless the line break. They might right. come oh. right. If they don't have a storm and they break, that's what they tell you about all the things that's covered. That's what they've been telling me. I don't need to tell another people for years. Now, like that tree right there hanging over right there, uh, Keith, that right there, uh, the city take care of that, right? Because uh, the tree, they've been coming through the neighborhood. The city don't take care of anything there in the Jew. That's what I'm telling you. Uh -huh. The oh, city yeah. doesn't do anything there. They said, like he says, A and P, when they call A and P, they said, did you have a storm? Is your electricity out? <laughs> and, and that's the end of it. Maybe the city needs to get involved with them. <laughs> yeah, but it's right here, though, the city's Back, the city's supposed to be taking care of this right here, you know, with it sticking out in the with street like that. Yeah, yeah. they trim it. But um, what is aspirin? Mm. They've been going through the community now, you know, trimming some of the trees and things back. Right. So I thought that they were supposed to, uh, you know, take care of these lines and things like that too. So what are we looking at here? So in this house, it's it's a condemned house. It's been condemned for many years. Um, it is in the new vacant property registry program. It's one that you know we've been working on for many years to try to get into compliance. Right now, it's in what we consider an exterior compliance, meaning it doesn't have peeling paint. Um, you know, it is secure. It appears to be secured, um, and we just kind of monitor it from there. So any of those con uh, conditions change, then you can take action? Correct, yeah. If anything changed, starts peeling paint, if it feels like it's unsecure, overgrown grass, at that point the city can come in and take the necessary action. Once a building is condemned, what is the uh, what, what can the owner do? Once it's condemned, um, the process uh, from the city standpoint is we monitor it. The owner uh, can do 
there's a lot of different things they can do. They can keep it condemned. Uh, a lot of people use them for storage, um, which is unfortunate, um, especially when it can be a nice house for a family. Uh, but the owner can, can really, as long as it's secure and exterior compliant, can keep it as long as it's maintained at that level. So condemn means you just can't live in it, but it does not necessarily have to be torn down. Correct. Yeah, condemn just means it's unhabitable, so you can't live in there um, for whatever reason. It could be structure. It could be something as simple as not having power and water. Um, but you can still use the property for other means. In the meantime, though, it's bringing down other you know, neighborhood property values. It, it does, unfortunately. That's one of the reasons for the vacant property registry program is so that we can keep track of these. And so far, the ones that we knew about, about 25% of them have changed hands with owners wanting to fix it up to make, uh, make it the same as the rest of the neighborhood. So we've got an issue here, expired tags and parking's not that great. Yeah, no, parking's not good at all, especially on this corner like this. That's just an accident waiting to happen. Yeah, yeah, we got some, you got, that already? got some debris to get cleaned up in here. First, okay. So we'll just call um, water resources and report this to them so they can get the inlet cleaned out, get the debris out of there and everything. I'm quite sure that it is impacting the water flow. So probably need to be addressed pretty fast. Yeah. Okay. It's typically left up to the homeowner, mm -hmm. but when it's not completed, um, Klaus and his crew will come around once or so a year okay. and trim it back and then usually bill the property owner. So is there a possibility that we've already been out here? It, it looks like it. looks like it. Like not probably, right. you know, maybe in the spring, I'm guessing, mm -hmm. uh, since it's grown back out. So uh, is it reportable since we've it is. Um, we can uh, let Klaus know that you know he needs to see if he can have his crew come out here and check the 100 block of Federal Street okay. and see if they can uh, do it. I don't know what their limitations are, what right. their right. Um, time limits are, time frames. You know, maybe they have it on the list just to do yeah. it twice a year. Yeah, they do I have a busy schedule they going do. on right now. So, uh, mm -hmm. but we'll definitely send him an email regarding it. What then is the follow-up, I guess, for the door hanger program once you've you know, sent the notices out and what, what happened from there on out? That's a great question. So from there, uh, letters were generated to all the properties that uh, we believed were vacant um, to the owners. And um, so far, the majority of the ones that we found were vacant have been verified to be vacant. So from there, a bill will be generated to the owners in one year. It's due July 1st of next year for $100. Um, if they're not collected, if the owners refuse to pay or put on the registry, there are additional fees that could be collected. So far this year, from the ones that we knew about, we've collected roughly about $9,600, which is half of the fees that we believed we could collect. So we're right now at about 50%, and hopefully pretty soon we'll, we'll be right there where we believe we would be. And out of the ones we already knew about, 25% of them roughly have already switched hands, changed ownerships. So the vacant property registry program so far seems to be working the way intended. Okay, so again, the idea being to get uh, property owners to, to do something with the property. Correct. I ideally, it's to do something with the property. Owners don't have to. It's their right. They can pay the fee and continue to keep the property vacant. 
uh, but the city takes action because there are so many issues with vacant property, with homeless, vagrants, uh, people walking by, doing damage to the property. So the city is going to do an inspection, uh, try to do it at least every six months, if not quarterly, to just drive by, inspect the property, make sure that it is secure um, and that nobody is there and that it is continued to be vacant. Um, and then the idea is to get the owner to come into compliance and make it a livable, a livable, affordable property for somebody in the neighborhood. Okay, this is Keith Wright. Uh, we have just wrapped up our neighborhood walkthrough with the Timbridge Hill neighborhood, Friends of Timbridge Hill, and had a, had a great walk. We, we uh, started at the center, down at the Yoder Center at 2nd and Jackson, um, made our way down to the old hospital off of Hollins and, and wrapped around in McConville. I mean, uh, I forgot the name of the street, street now, MacIver Street, and then made our way back up here um, along Federal. Um, had a great, had a great uh, walk. Um, a number of items came up, anywhere from uh, drop inlets that needed to be cleaned out to uh, overgrown right of ways uh, that need to be trimmed back um, to houses, vacant houses. Um, so we've really caught the gamut of. Uh, of, uh, of issues within this neighborhood. So um, a number of items that we're going to work on, a number of items that we're uh, kind of uh, looking for the neighborhood support on. Um, and so I will, at that, with that comment, uh, at, with the neighborhood, I'll turn it over sort of to Chubbs to maybe wrap things up from the neighborhood perspective. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we had a wonderful tour and I really enjoyed it. And uh, we pointed out a whole lot of problems. Uh, once we were having problems. And uh, again, just want to thank um, Keith and other uh, officials and, uh, for coming out, joining us to try to address some of these problems.